Hi guys, it's Hannah Mojo. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Um, that's weird. I have now been off of social media for over a month now, which is the longest break I have taken in over three years and it's been crazy. It's been a crazy past month and when Shane uploaded his documentary I feel like everyone thought that it was over and that I was just being silent you know to be an asshole or because I didn't care or whatever or that I was just out partying or whatever every single day since TanaCon I have found out so much horrible shit and when I say horrible shit I mean when I look at TanaCon the things that I found out they make TanaCon look like a lemonade stand you know a walk in the park I found out so many horrible things about so many horrible people and I sat with so many people in this industry people my age people with millions of followers people who are managed by the same people that hurt me and did me dirty and found out and got to hear the stories of sexual assault assault and rape and being drugged and being embezzled tens of thousands of dollars and being fucked over and lied to ten times harder than I could ever be. And I realize when I say this to you that those are very, very serious allegations and a very serious way to start out this video. But they're all true. And because of everything that happened with TanaCon, I have spent the last two months on what everyone thinks is a hiatus, but I've been finding out the horrible dark side of this industry. And I was originally going to make an entire documentary about it. Not only what happened at TanaCon, but everything I found out along with proof and along with interviews from all of those people and stories and footage from so many of your favorite influencers who have been done so dirty and just couldn't talk about it. And I ended up tweeting about it and Shane and I were at dinner with everyone, you know, all of his friends and people from TanaCon and all that kind of stuff and we were looking at the responses and everyone was just like, it's not the time for a documentary. And a lot of people were also telling me that if I come on to this video talking about TanaCon and then I'm like, oh, by the way, here are all these horrible things that everyone else has done. It's going to look like I'm pandering and I'm distracting people from what I'm really talking about and it's just not the right time and it's so hard for me and that's why it's taken me so long to figure out what I want this video to be because as soon as I spent an entire two months making a whole ass film Shane and I saw that that's and talked about you know that that's not what people want and I'm not gonna put it out in a time that I don't feel is right because it's such heavy shit and everything that has happened has been the worst experience of my entire life but I do believe that everything happens for a reason and I was put in those situations to eventually be the voice for and help those people who have gone through all of those horrible unspeakable things and if everything that happened with TanaCon never happened I would have never been put in those situations that I would have never met those people and I would have never realized how important it is truly for me to use this space this camera this what I started with to spread a message and actually talk about what matters and that is what I will be dedicating my time to in the future so yeah I, I haven't been just fucking off and not posting anything and I know so many people are gonna come to say that this is so late and why even do it and Shane already covered it and whatever and the bottom line is is everyone else has gotten to speak for me and I've yet to be able to tell this story from start to finish from my perspective I didn't feel comfortable doing it or uploading it or making that even my main focus until all refunds were issued and so now I can sit here today the morning of this video being uploaded letting you know that almost every single I'm talking like 99% of TanaCon refunds have been issued and I am so grateful for that. And I know a lot of people don't want to sit through a 40 minute video of me repeating myself with some cool ass montages over it and some never before seen footage and a Shane interview and all that kind of stuff. Some people just want answers and before getting into the video, to sum it all up, to give the people who don't want to sit through everything, the fluff, I'm an idiot. And I trusted a 20 year old idiot who illusioned to me that it would be the best TanaCon in the world. And to everyone saying that I didn't work, I've spent every single day, I became living, breathing robot TanaCon, but it just wasn't enough time. And where I went wrong was going into this with spite and going into this with ego and doing it in two months. I should have done it with people that I trusted and people that weren't hated in the industry and people that weren't lying to me 
me. I shouldn't have believed the lies with rose-colored glasses because I wanted the fantasy to become a reality and I shouldn't have done it with any ounce of spite towards VidCon no matter how much they wronged me. And I put my fans at stake, I put my reputation at stake, I put my life and everything that I love more than anything in the world at stake because I believed in it. But to be frank, that wasn't enough. To everyone that believed in me, whether you came and you got a sunburn and you waited in line for hours and hours and hours, or you are simply watching along this journey and you believed in me, that I let you down and I'm sorry. And I will spend the rest of my life trying to make it better. To everyone asking me about capacity and security because I feel like those are the number one questions and I want to answer them before you even watch this video. 5,000 tickets were sold or given away for TanaCon. I was told that 4,000 of those tickets would be free and 1,000 of them would be sold to cover costs of the event. And clearly, by any footage, if you've seen anything, that is not what happened. And that's what this video is about, is uncovering all of the lies I was told. That was by far one of the biggest, which I think fucked over the entire event. There's been a lot of verbiage about the capacity of TanaCon only being able to support 1,000 and that is not true. The actual capacity which included far more than the ballroom was 3,192 so that still means that the event was oversold and I was wrong forever ever condoning that but I was under the impression by the company that put on the event Good Times and Michael that people would be shuffling in and out and going through hallways and using different rooms and spaces in the event center and that everything would be safe and fine for that amount of people. And for everyone saying that I didn't research that or do anything about that, I spoke to the security team tens of tens of tens of times. I looked at the background checks. I spoke to the Marriott employees. I asked every question that you have asked 10,000 times over and I was just as dumbfounded as you were the day of TanaCon to see what actually happened. I was told that even if all 5,000 people did show up, it would be a tight fit, but it would still fit. And I toured the venue, but I was 19 and didn't know shit about that side of things, you know? If someone who runs conventions tells you, yo, this space fits 5,000 people and you ask a thousand questions and they answer them all with seemingly good enough answers, you think it's gonna be fine and it just wasn't. And I get into all of the details of all of that in this video, but so many people have questions that I wanted to answer that straight away. I didn't want anyone to have to sit through anything they didn't want to. And for everyone asking about flights and what I'm doing for all of those kind of people we are working on every possible solution every single day another reason I've been gone because that is so much more important than making a video I'm still as we speak figuring out ways to reimburse people who traveled and working on sending free merch to every single person because I want to go out of my way to apologize but like those girls said in Shane's video there's always gonna be people I can't accommodate there's no way to reimburse every flight there's going to be people that are angry for the time they spent and rightfully so and I have to acknowledge all of that and straight up own up to it and apologize for hurting or upsetting anyone and do my best to make it better because that's all I can do. And in this video, I talk a lot about what was said before TanaCon to me and how it actually came into play and how things actually happen and the differences between the two and how angry and frustrated I was. Keep in mind, I filmed this monologue like a month ago, but at the end of the day, I just wanna clarify before you even watch this video that I am not placing blame on anyone other than myself. I take full blame. In this situation as of right now, even though people are refunded, I am a lone wolf and I have to make everything better by myself because when shit goes bad, people run. <laughs> um, even though I'm talking about a lot of other people in ways I was illusioned and horrible people really and the horrible things that they've done and whatever it may be, I still take full blame. And if you're watching this for one second, please don't think that there is any part of me that thinks that I could get away with blaming anyone else because at the end of the day, I put my name on the event and I fucked up. So I wanna tell you if you're watching this, if in any way I let you down, I'm sorry. And I say this at the end of the video and I've said it a lot, but just know that I let me down a hundred thousand times harder. Even this morning, doing the final edits, watching the end clips of me and Shane and all this kind of stuff was making me so emotional laying there editing it. And I've come to realize that it's probably something I won't ever be angry about or upset about or have massive regrets. 
but I'm back. I'm admitting I've fucked up and I'm ready to continue documenting this journey and I'm grateful for anyone who wants to join me. And I'm grateful for Shane because I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be making this video and I wouldn't have had the balls to ever say anything like I did if it wasn't for him. And his ability to want to uncover the truth and to make art or something that makes people feel out of pain and misfortune is so inspiring to me and it always has been. Yeah, I love you Shane Dawson. But, but yeah, I'm gonna shut up now. I wanted to give everyone those answers. I wanted to tell you how I'm feeling as the morning of this video. And I wanted to tell you that I love you. And now it's time for past me to walk you through TanaCon in my shoes, along with the random video of me and Shane that makes no sense in this, but I just wanted you to enjoy it. So I'm gonna shut the fuck up now. Enjoy this or don't, I understand either way. Bye, but also hi again. <laughs> <clears throat> I've never been so nervous for anything in my entire life. Like for the first time I'm sitting down in front of a camera and I don't know what the fuck to say. I've been gone off of social media pretty much for the past two weeks and in the last three and a half years, it is the longest break I've taken. There's a hundred million thoughts in my brain but at the same time this numb, empty loss of words. And I think it's time that I stop running from everything and tell you guys my side of the story, I guess. TanaCon is going to be a thing. I want it to be a thing so bad. I never thought, like a year ago, I remember watching KSI talk about having a convention and I was like, there's no way I will ever be in a position to have my own convention or in a position where people would want to come to like my convention and to be sitting here a year later and that coming to fruition is so mind blowing to me. But yeah, I really want to do something free. I really want to do something with all of the new fun creators that everyone is super excited to meet and doesn't always get the opportunity to meet and I definitely want to do it around that same time. I just, yeah, I definitely want TanaCon to be a fun free cool experience. VidCon's version of Fire Festival happened. It's TanaCon. TanaCon was canceled. She was gonna create her own called TanaCon. 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 Yeah, con's a good word Things for it. quickly descended into chaos. She created her own event called TanaCon. 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 to TanaCon. Stay tuned to see what happens at TanaCon. It's day one of TanaCon. TanaCon's already way better. Also, I wanted to talk about TanaCon. What was supposed to be one of the biggest YouTube conventions, TanaCon, actually ended up being a huge disaster. TanaCon is canceled for those of you who care. TanaCon. a thing called TanaCon. What was supposed to be a giant middle finger to VidCon turned out to be a giant middle finger to her fan base. TanaCon was free a fuck, major bust. Free Anything wrong or bad or whatever, if there's bad to about it, it's on me, you. it's on my fucking face, yeah, you know? your name like, is the conference. Literally, so I mean, I have been putting my heart and soul into making it as perfect as you can. And no boy, it was perfect. A few weeks ago, TanaCon was something I was excited about. It was a dream of mine that was finally coming true or so it felt like. It was a dream originated in spite. When I saw the paper that Good Times was sending out that was like, fuck VidCon. Fuck VidCon! Fuck anyone who created VidCon! I didn't Literally. do that, if that makes it better, but it doesn't. Um, it's stupid and spiteful. It was so stupid. I think all of the rebelled people and all of the unwanted people should host a little meet and greet in Anaheim, California on the same days as VidCon. But it was something I was so fucking proud of. And I wanted you to be proud of it too. For the first time in my entire life, career, it felt like the whole world was on my side. Hey, I'm gonna back your ass up. Tell everybody that VidCon is the biggest piece of sh that anybody could go to. Now fast forward to today, I don't even know where to begin, honestly. I'm sitting at my computer, looking at videos of people with sunburns, crying, paramedics, 
I'm reading stories and DMing you guys, talking to people who came from Australia and Singapore and China and the UK and New York and traveled just to be turned away and sent home. It's horrible. It's so fucking horrible. I'm disgusted. I want to walk you through it all. The good, the bad, the ugly. I want to apologize to everyone I've wronged. And so now I want to explain all of my failures to you. I could have been so much better. <laughs> How I will be better. I want to explain it all. So let's do that. With as little jump cuts as possible, but I can't stop pausing and breathing. <laughs> and I'm fucking terrified. It all started with spite. So much fucking spite. I was angry. I was hurt. I was spiteful. VidCon. I was banned or kicked out or however you want to say it. I felt left out. I was seeing all my friends featured and I was, I was embarrassed. I felt like I should have been a part of it. I felt like everyone was a part of it. I should have been a part of it. And I know that sounds egotistical to say. It was something I looked up to in this industry, the biggest convention in this industry, for years. And I wanted to be a part of it so badly. And I waited and I waited and I waited and I thought I was doing everything right in my power and it still wasn't good enough and I was fucking angry, livid, to find out for the third year it wasn't gonna happen. And so I made a video about it. And that's where everything should have stopped after that video. It started to snowball and spiral out of control. I uploaded that video thinking that that would be it. All one hour and 19 minutes of me repeating myself over and fucking over again. But then the response was <laughs> fucking crazy. I've never done anything and had a response like that. It felt like the whole world was talking about me. And I felt that before, but not, not in a good way like this. Someone like me that a lot of people don't like doesn't always get to feel like the whole world is on their side. After uploading that video, seeing every single one of my favorite fucking creators, Philip DeFranco, run. And so this year she decided to take a huge swing and launch TanaCon. And it's not that she just launched her own event that makes this stand out. It starts tomorrow at the same time VidCon is happening. It is not only in Anaheim like VidCon, it is. It's taking place at the Anaheim Marriott Suites, which is so incredibly close. And reportedly there are already 80 confirmed creators to attend. And she has a solid range in addition to herself. You have Miranda Sings, Ricky Dillon, Shane Dawson, Casey Neistat, Bella Thorne. And so I am so fascinated to see how this goes. I'm a big fan of alternative events, anything that leads to more competition, maybe it's a different avenue. So whether it's something like a, a smaller, more niche thing or a direct competitor. I mean, VidCon this year is expected to have 30,000 people, but I think more and more you're gonna see things like a TanaCon pop up where people go, wouldn't it be more interesting if, if instead of all of these people, it could be one to four thousand of a kind of more central. Lisa Schwartz, Ricky Dillon, you name them. Talking about what I'd said in a positive light. And all of these creators coming forward telling me they had the same things happen to them. Or sharing their stories. And not only feeling like I, I started all of this in this movement, but having all these people on my side and having every press talking about you so positively. Feeling like for once I did something right and that it was a good thing to speak out and tell the truth. The response after posting that video was so much better than I anticipated. And after releasing the VidCon video, I didn't plan on doing anything, but everything kept growing and growing and growing and people started tweeting TanaCon, 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 Tan everywhere, comments everywhere, whatever. And I started to believe that if I had the right person helping that I could actually pull it off. Which looking back is so fucking stupid, like in two months, it's, it's so stupid. And as the concept of TanaCon became more real and it started picking up steam, I decided to release merch to kind of test the waters and see if people really fucked with it. I've never seen numbers like that. I've never seen that many people wanting to wear a fucking neon orange hoodie that says something dumb and spiteful that I created. And this was still all a part of my spiteful joke, but I was loving every fucking second of it. Soon the idea of creating an actual TanaCon wasn't a joke anymore. I couldn't back down at that point. I had to do it. Every person on the fucking platform was telling me 
to do it. The creators wanted a cool place for their voices to be heard and the fans wanted something cheaper and that's what sucks too is it's just like now because it went so poorly obviously all of that attention is flip-flopped and the negative attention is insane but it's also like with that much attention and people gassing you up and telling you you can do it you start to believe it you really start to believe it but the problem was that it was two months away and that's by far one of the biggest ways I fucked up. You don't plan a convention in two months. You don't put that many people's lives at risk to do something spiteful. You don't do it the same day as VidCon. You don't do it down the street. I didn't have to be spiteful like that and that's where I fucked up and Jordan knew that. And I, yeah. He wasn't gonna do it. He really, really wasn't and I should have fucking listened to him. I was seeing how much success this was all having and I was on an ego trip and I was so excited to make a change in the fucking industry and I was so excited to finally feel welcome somewhere. But I needed to find someone else who would help me. And then Michael Weiss texted me and suddenly I had a real way to make it happen. <laughs> or so I thought. Good times. I'd been to a previous event with good times. And I think that if that had never happened, TanaCon would have never happened. A few months prior, I went to Chicago with Good Times for... That's my song! <laughs> for a small event that they were doing. And they flew me out, and Michael was so good to me. You know, black cars and paparazzi and giant hotel suites and videographers following me everywhere and anything I wanted, the best security, everything. It was like he put on a show for me. He made me feel like royalty. He did everything in his power to make me feel like royalty. And looking back now, it was all lights and a show and none of it was real. And I didn't know that yet. And when Michael texted me about TanaCon and all I knew of him was this amazing experience in Chicago where I was wined and dined and it was so incredible and whatever. Of course I was down. If he could make a small convention like that go off so seamlessly, he obviously knows something about the industry he obviously wouldn't do anything that he couldn't do that he didn't think could be possible this was the guy that was going to make TanaCon a real thing and even though every single person in my life who I introduced him to or who knew him people were coming out of the fucking woodworks to tell me how much they didn't like him and how I shouldn't work with him upon meeting him for the first time I remember Hunter telling me he's so stuck up, he's so egotistical Bella got the worst vibes and was begging me every day to do TanaCon with her team and god I should have fucking listened I remember months before TanaCon right when everything started happening I went to James Charles's house and had a meeting with him about TanaCon and I remember James sitting there being like do not fucking work with good times Tana you're a fucking idiot if you do it and me being like but I believe in him but I believe I believe in him I didn't care I wanted to prove everyone wrong I I want to stray away from emotion in this video and pandering and all that fucking bullshit but I've always been the type of person where I never want to judge someone based off of everyone else's opinions because I'm always the girl that everyone judges based off of what everyone else has to say and I never want to be that person so if anything everyone fucking telling me not to made me dig my heels in ten times deeper and the combination of that and the way that my is was a cocktail for disaster but I didn't know it yet there was no backing out now for me TanaCon was a real thing we were a team and we were gonna make it happen and there were so many weird things and so many red flags looking back but I was so blinded by the idea of making my ultimate dream a reality and not even just that but getting back at VidCon showing the industry that there is a repercussions if the big dogs treat the little dogs like shit that eventually one day someone's gonna bite back and wanting to create a place for creators to never be treated the way I was, you know? And I let all of that cloud the red flags and the weird shit. Why was he filming himself doing every single thing? Why were people secretly recording me and I was catching them? Why was all of this? 
for a documentary that I wasn't gonna make and I wasn't gonna ever get any part of or anything like that, that I didn't even know about until the first Tanacon meeting. He just showed up with cameras and why is he segueing everywhere? Why is he dripped in Gucci and Chanel and all that kind of stuff when everyone who knows him says it's his parents' money, but then he says it's investors, but where are the investors? And oh wait, they're your parents, but they're not. And I thought you lived in a mansion. Oh wait, you live in your mom's guest house or why are you running around Anaheim after TanaCon was canceled crying and having someone film you on a Segway? <laughs> There's so many whys. Why are you going around telling everyone that I fired Jordan and you're my manager now? And why are you speaking down to everyone but me? Why are you telling me that if TanaCon goes well, you're gonna buy me a Rolex? Why are you taking me and all my friends to dinner after dinner at Catch LA and Tao and Beauty and Essex and Nobu and all that bullshit? You know, why are you bullshitting me so hard? And that's what's sad is I, I knew in the back of my mind that something was so fishy, but I let my fuck ego and spite drive me to continue to make TanaCon. I let the dream of the fantasy of what it could be drive me to continue to do it. I let everyone doubting me and telling me not to work with him motivate me 10 times harder to do it because I wanted to prove them wrong. I wanted to be the little dog that won. Michael made it seem like it'd be the easiest thing he'd ever done. Like he could plan TanaCon in two weeks with his eyes closed. All I had to do was be the face and the name and maybe invite some creators and he would do everything seamlessly because all he's ever done is plan conventions. But I wanted to be hands on and I wanted to work on it. I wanted to do everything too. And that's an, one thing that's infuriating, seeing Michael go around and say that TanaCon failed because I could have done more. How do we make rooms like this as dope as possible for as cheap as possible? We'll have a backdrop, table, chairs. Um, we could put parking up lights to light the walls around it. It would look cool. Okay. This is also the main stage. Like this door opens up at two at a certain day. Um, is that other side of the stage. Can I see that now? If I can get it. That's a big room and so. This will hold 330 people. We put the chairs in here, we've mapped it out. Three, originally we were gonna do 150. Mm -hmm. I filled it up to 330 last night. But everyone yeah. checking here is like yeah. a first checkpoint. Tell them. Uh huh. Okay. And that's like, that way if someone's like, oh yeah, I have a pass on my creator, we can check their ID and make sure they actually are on the list before they even go to registration. So they okay. never get back to the stage without adding double. That's awesome. That's awesome. Whoa, it's like big. It's very big. It's supposed to be like, the FF lounge, whatever they, I have nothing. Do from they it. want a talent lounge or do they want? Beats me. We should figure that out. Yeah, yeah. I've asked Jen. Uh, and then times. he's gonna have the audacity to say that it was like that because I could have done more. But I told you every item, and I told you I'd reach out to the companies. But you told me no, that's not my job as the talent. That all I have to do is put my face on it, and you'll handle it. But did you? No. But. It's still all my fault at the end of the day. I still attached my face and my name to it and I promoted it and I was down for it and I was ready because I wanted to win and I wanted things to be different. As much as I want to paint the picture to you guys that I believed in Michael because I wanted to believe in someone regardless of what everyone said, I still believed in someone that gave me bad vibes. I wanted to believe the fantasy over the reality. I let someone whine and dine me and schmooze and lie to me and tell me everything was is gonna be fucking flawless and he can do this convention 10 times over with his hands tied behind his back while everyone was fucking telling me that he was the worst and I should have listened and I'm a fucking idiot. Seeing Michael go around and say, oh, you were in Hawaii a few weeks before. Yeah, Michael, and you were in Nashville. So even if I was in LA, we still would have met over the phone just like we did every fucking day. That I could have done more about the gift bags when I sat in my living room with Hunter, Elijah, Mario, Amari, Ashley, Isabella, telling you that I wanted merch in the gift bags, that I wanted mini clip-in hair extended in the gift bags, that I wanted jewelry in the gift bags, and what kind of jewelry. That I wanted glitter from Lemonhead LA or Go Get Glitter at the in glitter tier packages, that I wanted makeup products from ColourPop and that I wanted to reach out and he told me no, he would do it and he'll take care of it. And sitting there and asking him in front of all those people, okay, so you're gonna have every single one of those items in the gift bag. And then getting the Tanic on and it being a condom. I wanna talk about planning. <sighs> planning. It all seems ridiculous now with all of this footage, but <laughs> this is something that I worked harder on than I've ever worked on anything in my entire life. I became living, breathing This Tanacon. is another meetup room uh -huh. and small panels, Chapman. Mm -hmm. Also, this is 90 
Can we put the... Hide the drape goes right there. Back okay. up, tables, feet. And do, the, do we have color preferences of the drape as well? We could put one of those DJs like to do an outside pool party. And we're getting... And have a TanaCon pool party for the fans. It would be yeah, cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Right. We're, tr we're getting Fun Boy. I think it's the name of it. Floats. You know those expensive ass little floats? So you can put like TanaCon floats in there. Oh, that's really cool. But it's like a good oh, wait, place. But it's fun. It's, it's a good place to keep the traffic out. Wow, okay, interesting. Dreams do come true, kids. Dreams do come true. So Loris is renting out that whole restaurant? Yeah, like, well, yeah, we should do so many photo opportunity things for yeah. that. There's gonna be like shit just to kind of have fun with and be like, there's an open bar, there's brunches. Exactly. There's I really wanna. Endless mimosas on Saturday morning. Like articulate that. Too big to where it would look empty. Like at Playlist, that stage is never packed wall to wall. I know, this one's gonna be like a show. Like, <laughs> sorry, Playlist. A show. Like, <laughs> like a mosh pit. But a safe. Yeah. <laughs> Bear security. Yeah. Control. Literally, I I want to almost give off slight warp tour vibes like that. Which you know is what like, I mean? oh, kind of you got fun. that coming. Cool, young, yeah. like edgy. I mean, people are gonna be going out around the building, barricades everywhere. Like it's gonna be. Is there gonna be a barricade at the main stage? Yeah. The reservation. Okay. Some people might not be there yet. Some people might be flying from really far yeah. or whatever. I didn't even think about that. So like, it's all I'm learning with experience. But I like that because then that means I'm fucking hands on and I actually care and I'm actually giving yeah, you what I like want. Yeah, what's like how you're supposed to reserve them yourself person but then you changed it to online right yeah exactly and exactly like, and that's why people are like you don't hear us you're like no i'm like no i'm reading every single thing you're just working behind and the scenes exactly and proactively going to fix shit you know because that's yeah. all you fucking do i'm only human it's tanacon it's, it's not Tana, i'm not zoella <laughs> like you know what i mean like, tanacon robot i sat up every single night going over every goddamn thing with Michael Weist. Whether it was security, whether it was lines outside, whether it was merchandise, which YouTubers merchandise we wanted there, which exclusive merchandise we wanted to make, how we were gonna design it, every single fucking item that was guaranteed to be in those gift bags, the capacities, the room, the safety, the security, the 91 security guards that ended up being 25, how many paramedics we wanted, which YouTubers got which hotel rooms and what I wanted to put, it, put in them and Oh my god. And which sponsors I wanted and which companies I wanted there and what I wanted my birthday party to look like and what songs I wanted the fans to hear first and what panels I wanted in every single person on each and every one of those panels and what panel came after which one and what went before the other one and making sure nothing conflicted with anyone's VidCon experience and asking over and over and over and over and over and over again that the security and the capacity would be fine. I asked Michael Weist if the security and the capacity would be fine 500,000 fucking times. And every single time I was told, yes, it will be perfect. Don't even worry about that. Don't, you're the YouTuber, you're the talent. Focus on who you want on what panel. Are you kidding me? Of course safety and security is gonna be fine, Tana. Why wouldn't it be? But to go even further in what I was responsible for planning, it was the concept and foundation of TanaCon. But I want to be a little more clear than that. The concept and foundation of TanaCon was planned by me. And I was going to kick and fucking scream until it got done. And I honestly think that this is the most important message I want to convey in this video. And the reason why I explained how I was wined and dined and how Michael was and everything that happened is so that I can convey this message. I believed that I could place the task of creating a perfect, safe, happy, awesome TanaCon in the hands of Michael Weist and Good Times. Did I want to be a pivotal part of creating the event? Did I want to choose every little thing down to the color of the gift bags and what person was on what panel and every little fucking thing? Hell yes I did and I did that. I was on my phone every second of every day with that man, but the responsibility of the logistics and the production and the security and the safety and the lines and the water and the food and the paramedics I placed in the hands of the production company, good times. Because at the end of the day, and I'm not falling back on this on a crutch because like I said, I'm a fucking idiot for ever doing it out of spite and ever doing it in two months and ever doing it on the same day. But I still at the time was a 19 year old girl who makes YouTube videos. I don't run a convention company. And Michael Weist made me believe that he ran the best convention company and he was going to make 
me the best convention he possibly could. He did everything in his power to make me believe that we had plenty of time and that security was gonna be fucking on lock and that everyone was gonna be inside with plenty of space. The gift bags would be full and that all I had to do was tell him what I wanted and he would make it happen. And so as the days for TanaCon came up further and further and further, I began to realize that Michael was a little dumber than he was a lot dumber than he was putting off to be. That the ego was to cover up a lot. That there were a lot, a lot, a lot of lies. I think I was beginning to realize that I didn't make the right choice. But we're a week away with 4,000 tickets sold. I didn't know what to do. So I enlist the help of Jordan and we do everything we can to make things as great as possible. But again, Jordan doesn't run a convention company, he's a talent manager. So we locked every influencer for every panel and we locked down every sponsor and we locked down everything we could. But Michael was allegedly handling all of the things we knew nothing about. Security, venue, capacity, safety. It was scary. <laughs> but I was so excited. I went and toured the venue, asked about security another 100,000 times, asked about capacity another 100,000 times. It's for registration. We have the whole parking lot. Like, yeah, okay. to do like, we're gonna put the registration booths out there so it keeps traffic out. Because this is, frankly, 5,000 people is a lot of people. Yeah, um, yeah. And like, you see the space. So we gotta make that work. We're gonna have to. Wow, I was beginning to realize that every time I spoke to Michael, he was telling me something different. You know, that the capacity is 3,298. Oh no, wait, that's the capacity of the main ballroom. Oh no, wait, we now have the lobby, so that's another 700 to 1,000 people we can hold. Oh no, every hallway holds 100 people. Here, Tana, come back to Anaheim. Let's tour all of the offset rooms. This room can hold a panel and it can hold 300 people. This room can hold this many people. Outside, no one will be in line for that long at all. Look, we set that up. Meet the security team, meet the security guards. There's gonna be 91. You had the chance that's to completely close line somebody this weekend. No. Body Not slam? Like a really body slam? Kid. Uh, maybe like this. I don't know. Ooh, she said maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she somebody would. that gets on my nerves. Is... So you have a face piercing and you're not willing to just body slam? Well, it depends how annoyed you're gonna get me. Okay, so there's an option. See, meet the security guards. There's gonna be 91. That's double more than we need. Everyone's gonna be so safe. Tanacon. I remember laying in bed the night before with Hunter watching. Philip DeFranco's first video I'm interested on it. in it. But we'll see. Personally, I hope it does well because the success of others and people being more independent in this community leads to more success for others being independent in and this community. I'm bawling my eyes out, happy tears, because I felt like I'd finally made a positive footprint in the community. I remember walking into TanaCon off of a party bus with all my friends running into the arms of the fans outside Balling. And then right after that, Michael and his videographer Phil told me and Hunter that we could never fucking have that footage because it was for a documentary that they were filming. <laughs> but that's beside the point. But even that was weird, you know? Why was Michael's entire video team threatening me and my videographer because they own the rights to all the footage? Why was Michael calling himself the CEO of TanaCon and my manager that night when he wasn't? And now TanaCon had started. It was the morning of... And where was Michael? He was cheersing champagne on a Segway running around while Jordan and I were actually planning everything. He was making sure the Good Times posters were hung up while not giving a fuck about the thousand fans that were already lined up outside. And what's crazy is even the first three or four hours of TanaCon, there was already so many horrible things happening. So many people were stuck outside and the gift bags were... <laughs> Atrocious. Gucci Creators princess, but I can't afford angry. that because I wasted my no money idea. on a ticket. Michael was having his team shed wool over my eyes and tell me that everything was fine. I'm walking beside Michael on a segue. He goes, I'm gonna walk you over. Hops on the segue. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we're going to the Filthy Fangs room, which Bella was up until like 6 in the morning last night building out and making crazy. It's a party in there apparently, so I'm excited to see. What? Yo guys, for both of you, actually for all three of you, right after this panel is the wedding, so we all still Okay, but I'm I have to train I have to put on my, my okay. I also have an uncostumed so, so is he right? Is he right? <laughs> A little outfit change. I'm about to marry two people. I got ordained. I'm actually a minister. Actually, very excited for Jordan to see how I look right now. Uh, I think this is the most clothes he will ever see me wear. So can I get a giant round of applause for my bride and groom, everybody? And I fell in love with you so easily. Yeah, I mean, I saw the show. So I was doing panels and, and I was 
hosting a Q&A with Lena and Adam and hosting a Q&A with Emma and hosting the wedding and I was crying every 20 minutes because I thought everything was fucking perfect. I thought my dreams had finally come true. I thought I was in my literal heaven. I haven't even started my Tanacon vlog yet, but Kira's here and she has something for me to open. So, you have to say, it's my game. I keep forgetting it's my birthday and people keep talking about birthday presents and I get, it's so alcohol. <laughs> what do you think it was? What's up, TanaCon vlog? I just hopped up in the Wraith. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> TanaCon started. I have a convention. This doesn't feel real. I'm dying. Bye. <laughs> Hello, vlog. We didn't have a speaker, so we were all playing the same songs out of our phone at once to try to amplify the music. It's been an interesting ride. Um, I'm about to get out and see the first TanaCon fans thus far. I'm excited. Okay, so this is Tana's vlog. Yeah. I just like to say, this is the dopest shit I've ever experienced <laughs> in my life. I have a, I have all this stuff I have to do tomorrow, and guess what? I'm pumped for it because it's for TanaCon. It's not for some stupid ass money sucking ass shit. It's for fun, and it's for Tana, and it's for you, and we just love it. See you tomorrow. <laughs> wow, I'm so emotional. It's gross. Like that made my left eye. I don't know why the right eye didn't, but the left eye teared up like hardcore. Hey. Hey guys, we're at IHOB. IHOB. Whose is this? Because if it's nobody's, I will. There's Segways charging outside. My room uh, was just open. Maybe I'm gonna get murdered. Yes, security. Yes, yes. He's like, I'm trying to live. Look. Good morning, Tanacon Blog. Makeup by Sam. It came all the way here to make me less ugly. Yeah. That's cool. I literally was like, fuck these bitches. Everyone asked me, come to Tanacon. And I was like, no. Tanacon day one. Today's my last day being a teenager. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that sorry, that sorry. sounded like you're about to die or something. <laughs> Philip DeFranco did a video on me last night and I was up till 6 a.m. because I was so happy I couldn't sleep. Good morning, TanaCon day one vlog. We're headed to the opening of TanaCon. I don't know what the fuck to say. I'm so emotional. <gasps> How many minutes? 11 minutes. 11 minutes. Okay, cool. Cool, just making sure. <laughs> Kicked us out. But little did I know every time I walked out of a room everyone was freaking the fuck out because everything was going wrong Because Michael didn't do shit and Michael didn't know shit and after a few hours I'm about to do a Q&A on stage with Gabby. I find out it's doomsday okay, okay, okay. Uh, This is critical, okay? Okay. We are in absolute doomsday scenario This is the first case. We're shut down, okay? We need to put it up now so the Tanacon is canceled and there are thousands of people outside and that everything is going horribly. And of course I'm a selfish asshole and I go upstairs to change my clothes and make Gabby wait and just suck. And while I'm up there I'm getting texts from and I'm being told that there are 20,000 people outside. Michael is going around to everyone, bragging, telling everyone, there's 20,000 people outside. Tana, congratulations. He's making it seem like the best thing ever. Look out the window, everything's fine. No one's even mad at you. It's 20,000 people outside. They love you so much. Everything's gonna be fine. It's 20,000, 20,000, we count. I can't even tell you how many times. Michael came to tell me that it was 20,000 people and he was so excited. And that's what's the most fucked up to me. An honest, decent person in that moment would have said, I fucked up and there's 5,000 people outside, maybe, and they all have sunburns and they're all sobbing and bawling their eyes out. And TanaCon went horribly and I fucked you over and I'm sorry. But no. He's riding around on a Segway, telling me to go on Instagram Live and thank everyone for the 20,000 people and go outside with Bella and hand out some waters and everything's gonna be fine and we'll do TanaCon day two. And that was pretty much the last I saw of Michael. <laughs> Literally. He segwayed away, had his camera guy Phil film him crying, running around Anaheim while Jordan and I sat in a boardroom trying to figure out what the fuck to do. Downstairs. So I'm gonna have a meeting with them and then we're gonna come back up here what we do. That's what's crazy to me too is that um, after all of this Michael had the audacity to say that I I just went out and partied that night. Well no. I sat in a boardroom for five hours and your entire team who's terrified of you and I still don't know why you have an entire team of good time staff who's terrified of you finally spoke up to me and told me all of the lies you told me and how there's no way we can actually do a day two and even though Michael's saying that and that we can fix everything 
that he didn't do anything right. I found out in that boardroom that the morning of, he canceled the paramedics because he didn't want to spend the money on it. That he cut the security guards in half. That he was on Instagram DMing Always Again USA, asking them to print him black shirts that said security. Exit, exit, exit. People are stupid. Yeah. Oh, That's why they're not listening. No, exit. Yeah. Yeah, sir, it's fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, Tweet Bursty, remember me, man. I'm gonna be at the top with Adam. Remember me, Adam 22. I'm gonna be with him. Uh, my name's Clinton, and uh, I work security for Terracon. It's crazy, as you guys can see. There's about 20 to 30,000 kids out there, and they got little me and my team out here trying to keep, keep, keep these guys in line. This shit is no joke. It is no joke. I thought there were more security guards. That if I were to do a day two, that someone would probably die and that I was lucky that no one died today. That was the first time in that boardroom that I got to hear the truth about Tanacon. That his team finally broke down and stopped lying to me, stopped being afraid of him. It was all a facade and that the smartest thing to do would be to cancel it for the safety and happiness of my fans. That was one of the most devastating moments of my life. Everything was like this, you know? Everyone was talking about it. It was gonna be so amazing. It was gonna be so perfect. The security's fine. Everything's gonna be great. The hotel capacity's fine. Well, you finally made a change, whatever. Just kidding, it's all a lie. You're lucky your fans didn't die today. The security isn't real security. And the paramedics were canceled. Michael Weiss would rather spend that money on Chanel earrings. Your gift bags were a condom. I didn't know what to do. I was in shock mode. I, I thought it would be the best thing to do, to leave the Marriott and to go to my network's party and to talk to you guys outside. There were like a hundred fans outside, so I went and talked to them, to talk to all of the people in the industry inside of the party and ask their advice, to apologize to creators, to try to start mopping up the mess. And for him to go in an interview and say that I was just out partying while all I was trying to do was damage control the thousands of fucking lies he told to me and figure something out, any truth is the most angering thing. And to be so goddamn angry at VidCon for three years and now to sit back and be 10,000 times more angry at the one person I thought I could trust to help me pull this off is devastating. To want nothing more than for TanaCon to go well and to see videos of third fucking degree sunburns and people on stretchers hear the stories of the fans who were still there that traveled all the way from Australia and London and wherever else is soul shattering and so infuriating because I would have never done TanaCon if I knew it was gonna happen like that. But now that left Jordan and I to mop up the mess. And then we come to find out all of the numbers. There weren't 20,000 people outside and now I look like a fucking idiot. The venue could never have held 5,000 people and it was oversold. The security was a fucking joke. But at the end of the day, I put my name on it. My idea originated in spite and I made a huge fucking mess and I have to clean it up past two weeks. I've been radio silent. Everyone wanted to know immediately why I wasn't making a video and why I wasn't addressing it and all of that kind of stuff. This is why. I didn't know what the fuck to say. I didn't know what the fuck was the truth. I didn't know what the fuck was a lie. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. And I didn't want to sit down and talk about it until I knew every damn thing. And what's crazy is everyone thinks that after Shane's video came out that I knew everything and I'm still being silent for no reason and whatever. I'm still finding out so much stuff to this day. Refunds. Like I told you earlier, Michael Hid showed up to my birthday party to tell me that he loved me and wished me a happy birthday. I said, I don't know what to say because even I almost understood why everyone was so afraid of him. And then he left Anaheim back to Nashville on a plane, stranded all of the creators that were still in Anaheim and started hitting him up about refunds. And I heard no response. I started calling him and calling him and then I see that he went outside and told people that Jordan wasn't responding during all of TanaCon when in reality Jordan was the only person trying to hold anything together. So that was what he did before he left. And I became very aware that the only people who actually cared about the fans and their refunds were Shane, James, 
the other creators. I start hearing rumors from everyone that Michael knows that he's telling everyone he's just fine and he made 450 grand from TanaCon and then Bryce starts showing me all the fake bake statements that Michael used to make to show him how much money he had before he stole his. And then Michael sees that Shane is gonna make a TanaCon video and then starts becoming so responsive and he's upset and he's gonna lose his house and he's going bankrupt but the bank statements he sent me were fake and I don't believe any of that for a damn second and now suddenly he's so upset and he cares so much and so we all start discussing refunds and it's very prevalent that Michael doesn't know what the fuck to do I might have to write a check and issue refunds myself and then after I think Shane realized all of this he was nice enough to help the situation and I appreciate Shane so much more than you'll ever know I know that that's not what this is about but no one knew all of this for the last two weeks Shane was the only person to listen and understand that I'm a fucking idiot and call me out on all my bullshit but still give me a platform to transparently tell this story on and care about the refunds and care about the fans and talk to Michael and I don't think Michael would have ever talked to me if it wasn't for Shane so I'm so grateful for his position in that sense and Shane's my fucking dad. We all know I would be dead if it wasn't for him, so I'm not even gonna get into that, but I don't even know what I would do in this situation if it wasn't for Shane fucking Dawson. He could have walked away so easily. All he was was a creator that reluctantly agreed to show up at my event and to take on this responsibility it is the greatest thing someone could ever do for me and I will never be able to repay him, but you all know that. And for him to forgive me and still talk to me every day and listen to me, means the world. Now here we are, present day, in my house, coming back to the world, facing this head on, sitting in the same spot that I was so spitefully screamed at VidCon. And so now I've been spending every single day trying to work on a perfect solution, but the truth is nothing will ever make this fully right and it will be one of the biggest regrets of my life for the rest of my life. I'm gonna do everything I can to make it right and as much as I want to be radio silent and continue to hide the good parts of my intentions, the parts of me that wanted to be the voice for the creators and make a change in this industry and make a change in the way that creators are treated and be the voice for people who are treated like shit and give the fans what they deserve. That voice in me doesn't want to back down because if I were to back down and give up on the right things that I believed in, that would be losing in my eyes. But to everyone that's out here calling me a con artist, Tana con, Tana you're an evil mastermind, you're a piece of shit, whatever. I didn't make a fucking dime on TanaCon and now I will be losing my money. If anyone thinks that I went into TanaCon for anything other than a wild fucking dream fueled by a fuck ton of spite, you were wrong. My tickets were $65 and Michael spent every dime that was earned, but I didn't do it for the money. I did it because I wanted to create a better, different event. Was it fueled by spite? Was it fueled by ego? Would I have been so persistent if I wasn't getting the attention and the press and all of the crazy shit that was happening? Probably not. But I knew from day one that I wasn't making a dime, that it was for the greater good of the industry, that it was for making a footprint in this world, that it was for doing something dope and cheap for once for the fans. I wanted something free. I wanted free tickets. That's another fucking conversation. I remember texting Michael every four or five days all the way up until TanaCon being like, okay, drop 200 free tickets. And he'd be like, okay, 200 tickets are live on the site right now. I did this probably like like 10 times. But then coming to see that every single person outside waiting in line had paid for a ticket. So you were lying to me about how many free tickets were given away so that you could profit more? I wanted all free tickets. Such a fucking mess. Now I'm spending my time working on free meetups in as many of the most popular cities, no matter where they are, of people who bought tickets and stuff for charity with Shane, starting from the ground up again with the same morals of what I believed in when I made those videos, but with a whole hell of a lot less spite and a giant slap in the face from reality and a whole fuck ton of trust issues. A long time ago, someone said to me, if 
you want something done right, do it yourself. And that's where I am with all of this. I will never blindly trust anyone again. I will never let ego and spite fuel the decisions I make with someone. If everyone tells me not to fuck with a person in the business industry, I'm not gonna do it. As much as that sucks, it's the truth. I'm not gonna do things without months of planning. I'm not gonna do things like TanaCon. A lot of change has to be made. I'm gonna stick to what I know. I'm gonna research everything I can. I'm gonna look at everything that went wrong so I know how things can go right. I'm gonna work with Jordan David Warona and that's about it because he's the only fucking person in this industry who isn't a snake. I'm gonna be more guarded. If people are secretly filming me and telling me if I sell this many tickets, they're gonna buy me a Rolex, I'm gonna tell them to get the fuck out of my house. If James Charles, the smartest sister in this fucking industry tells me not to trust someone, I'm gonna listen to him. I'm working on everything I can to figure out how to accommodate all of the travel funds of people who traveled, but in the meantime, I am so sorry. I'm sorry if you came to TanaCon. I'm sorry if you had a sunburn. I'm sorry if you waited in line. I'm sorry you didn't get to meet your favorite creators. I'm sorry that you ever even had to look at that sorry excuse for a gift bag. And I'm sorry if you believed in me, if I let you down, and I'm sorry for fucking this up. I'm sorry for being dumb, egotistical, spiteful, selfish, stupid, irresponsible. I'm gonna do everything in my power to make it right, and I'm not gonna give up for the voice of the fucking creators and the voice of the fucking fans. I'm not gonna stop trying because I would be a sorry excuse of, I don't wanna say role model, but you know what I mean. If I came on here weeks ago preaching never to give up on your dreams and then because one thing went wrong, I'm gonna give up forever. That's not who I am and that's not who I want you guys to be and that's not the goddamn message I'm gonna spread on this channel. But thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for being on this journey with me. Thank you for letting me tell you what happened. I was lied to so much. I've never been and I probably never will be more lied to in my entire life by anyone. I trusted a horrible person and a horrible company. Michael Weist and his entire staff of people who were terrified of him fucked me over brutally, but I'm still a fucking idiot for attaching myself to it and letting it happen. I knew better and I'm fucking stupid and I'm sorry. If you think I let you down, just know I, I let me down so much harder. I just wanna say thank you to Shane and thank you to you guys. It's time to pick up the pieces and figure the shit out. But I, ju I just mean like my videos, like coming back, like everything, like I'm just, I'm straight up, I'm scared as well. This has been crazy. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. I do think everything happens for a reason. I think that this happened to show people just because you have a bunch of followers and just because people like you, you don't, you shouldn't throw a convention in a month. Straight up. Okay, <laughs> so Straight that's up. something. I think the whole tone of the convention was negative. It started out kind of like, oh, you know, this is for whatever, and oh, this is gonna be for the creators, it's gonna be this and that. But like the closer it got to it, the more it just became fuck VidCon. I agree. Um, which I didn't even know, really, because I wasn't really looking into it. I wasn't much. ever, like, down for that, but I didn't do anything to stop it. You know, like, on their message to the creators when they wrote fuck VidCon, I didn't do that, I didn't approve that, I didn't see that. That was a surprise to me, but I also didn't stop it. So I take the blame for that. And I made the video, you know, saying, VidCon did me dirty, I want to do something the same day, and that was petty. I should have never done it the same day. Were my mantras and shit of, you know, the creators having a better time true? Of course they were. I had a horrible time at VidCon. I was treated horribly. So many creators were too, and I wanted to do something better. But Tana, newsflash, you can't do that in a month with a 20-year-old. Yeah. Like, it's just not possible. And I should have thought about it more. One big question that a lot of people are still going to have is, why did it take you so long to respond? And to tweet and why was I the one that sure was enough. telling everybody it was canceled I, you didn't ask me to do that but I did it because yeah. I was like somebody has to fucking say yeah. like oh this shit is canceled this shit's bad this is not safe I mean first of all like I have told you from the beginning I didn't know things were going bad at TanaCon until an hour after like everything like I was doing stuff on stage they were telling me everything was absolutely fine it wasn't until me and Bella went up to my hotel room and actually saw all the people outside and we were like let's go down there with water that I knew shit was actually 
horrible. And by that time, people are already ready for a response. Ever since any scandal, I've had everything bad in the past. The one thing I've learned is you don't want to be impulsive. You don't want to go live and say bullshit that doesn't, you know, account for things. And I've done that so much in the past, like impulsive tweeting, impulsive bullshit. I felt like it was better for me to sit back, reflect. And when I went to talk about it, make sure that everything I was saying was factual, make sure that everything I was saying was apologetic and me taking the blame, whatever. And I wanted to think about it, but still I waited too long. It probably would have been a better time to be impulsive and say everything on my mind. And like you were saying earlier to me on the phone, if I went there and I had that experience and it was that bad, I would have been straight to Twitter. Mm -hmm. If I have a bad experience on a fucking airline, I'm on Twitter talking yeah. about it. So for me to, to go silent in that moment was dumb, but I was just fucking scared and I wanted to make sure that what I said was true. Were you afraid of dragging good times? <laughs> I still am. Even just after everything that we filmed, I'm, I hate to place the blame on anyone but myself because at the end of the day, like in my head, like I'm angry at myself for this. This is my fault. It's Tanacon. You fucked up. Being able to talk to you and shine a light on the fact that I was being told that everything was fucking perfect. And I was researching and trying to do everything I could and being told it was all perfect and that it didn't end up being and that maybe, you know, other people did have a lot to contribute in this getting fucked up does feel good and knowing that you're a credible source and you wouldn't put anything out there unless it was fucking true as fuck feels good because i feel like if i went on my channel and was like yo fuck good times with my goal this sucks whatever it wouldn't be as credible it would just right. be me whining about shit you know and i think it was very like the wrong message for your audience and for people in general which is i know you had this whole thing of like oh i'm gonna fight for the little guy i'm gonna whatever and i stand by that it looks like it was more of an ego trip because you called it Tanacon. You know what I mean? You call it Tanacon. Yeah, 100%. But on the roster is me. Yeah. Who doesn't go to conventions. You yeah. have. It's literally Shane Con. Casey. <laughs> yeah, like straight up. Casey Neistat, who, like, yeah. is, you know, I was with James Charles, who yeah. I, I don't know that well yet. I, I, I've met, I haven't with him a few times. I'm sitting there yeah. with Rylan. I'm sitting there with his sister yeah. and Andrew. We're all freaking out, panicking, and I'm seeing this Instagram live where you're just, like, talking about how, like, you can't believe there's so many yeah. people I no cut idea. to, so bad. they're out there burning and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And it's, like, in the moment, you know, yeah, it was James typing something catty in the chat, no, but, but it was me behind the phone yeah. being like, what the fuck is she doing? Yeah, Trying to call you, text you, going, what the the fuck are you doing? I think I called you right after that. 100%. Because it's just like, that looks so bad. That is literally why, as soon as I saw everything, I hopped on Twitter and said, I know everyone's angry and whatever, but I want to thank Shane and James because everyone is sitting here telling me, congratulations, like you got 20,000 people here. It's Michael trying to fix things and whatever, being like, Tana, no, you did a great job, whatever. Until I'm seeing all these people with fucking sunburns and shit. And like, of course you guys are standing up for what's right, especially you're on this lineup, your name's attached to it, all these things are happening. Like, like I, I wish I would have known sooner that that shit was happening so that I never did tweet or live stream like that because that's not, it's not what you say when that's happening. Now, she's not here to defend herself, but Bella, who's on the roster too, who's yeah. like with you the whole time, tweeting like, oh, security's being an asshole. Yeah. Oh, fuck security. And in that moment, we're upstairs in our room being told, you know, security's just being jerks. People had to wait a little too long. A bunch of people just showed up. It's 20,000. Congratulations. It's fine. The parking lot's big, whatever. And it wasn't until hours and hours later when I'm actually seeing videos of what and tweets of what was happening. The second we realized all those people were outside, yeah, we ran down to give them water and shit like that but we're still being told like it's fine though they're leaving you're gonna be on for tomorrow like mm. it's you know just security or jerks and obviously bella too like she's invested in this but not as much as me you know she's selling her merch and she's there and she's supporting me it's not her job to know all the security stuff like i thought i knew all of that you know yeah. i thought security was gonna be great and whatever and then we're told oh they're just jerks yeah. No, they're not jerks. You hired a horrible fucking company of half the people that you said was going to be there and they didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Straight up being fed a lot of bullshit. I don't know if you want that. What do you think about, and I don't know if you even know this, but VidCon was like helping and was trying to help and like called me and called people and like came to the parking lot and helped kids with their sunburns and helped kids get... To be honest sun. with you, knowing that they in those moments were caring about the fans and the creators and all that kind of stuff just in general that make this industry possible it makes me really see them in a different light and i didn't know that and yeah. i think it's really fucking cool 
Yeah, and I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that, but like, fuck it, I'll just say it. What are they gonna do to me? Like, yeah. honestly, they they were so like, we want to help. We know Tana, That's awesome. we know fuck Bitcoin, we know all that stuff. But like, this is That's awesome. more important to like make sure everybody's okay and Tana's okay and everybody involved is okay because this That's is like awesome. crazy. The girls we interviewed earlier, they said that people from VidCon were helping them like finding places to go and stuff. Wow. And, yeah. That, so that's crazy. And the reason that's I bring really that up good. is just to put things in perspective because I know what it's like. Trust me. I have had so many companies constantly, even now, fuck me over in so many ways. Yeah. I have had brand deals fall through. I have had companies steal my ideas. I have yeah. had TV networks steal my ideas. I have had YouTube itself fuck me over constantly. Yeah. And yes, would I love to start my own YouTube and like start my own yeah. thing? With it? Fuck yeah. If that ever happens, I know it's going to take a long time to do. That is something huge you, I took from this. You know is how mean? much time it actually takes to do things. And hard you work, can't, yeah. Exactly. You can't prepare things overnight like that. Yeah. I don't expect them to be perfect. You're right. I feel. I trust you. As not just an audience member, but somebody who was very, very mad at you earlier today. Like, yeah. I was pissed. <laughs> For every right reason. You the fact that I mean? you're not even mad now or less mad or whatever. Like, you're not livid. You're not screaming at me. You're not hitting me in the face yeah. right now. It's beyond me. I deserve right. it. You can hit me in the face. I mean, fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be oh. fine. Thank you for doing this. Uh, Don't this has me. been the craziest experience I've ever seen. But more importantly, we're going to figure out how to fix this. And we're going to... Exactly. That's you know, all that... Make it all work. Get the refunds. We can do it. Yeah. The fact that we can even say we, that you care to help me, means so much more. What a journey. Hey. Thank you, I Ricky. love my dad. Thank you, Ricky. Hon. <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. Thank you. For the tea. <laughs>